Hello, this is Mark Unkefer, Executive Director of the Fiber Optic Sensing Association, and welcome to our uh, webinar. Uh, this one is Asset Monitoring, Asset Integrity, and Optical Sensing Technology in Energy Transmission Distribution Industry. So this gives us a chance to uh, explore one of the uh, uh, use cases in electric transmission, among other things, uh, for fiber optic sensing. And as a presenter, we have uh, Landry Malimbi, who's Vice President of Asset Management at uh, Prismian Electronics. And in addition to his corporate role, he has a, a very deep uh, technical background that uh, we will, we're very fortunate to be able to draw on on today's webinar. So Landry, we look forward to hearing from you. All right, uh, thank you for the introduction, uh, Mark. And thanks to uh, FOSA for the uh, invitation. Uh, before we start, I wanted to uh, quickly thank my peers at the Prismian Group who uh, contributed to the presentation, especially the uh, Prismian Electronics team, uh, the high voltage team, and uh, most importantly, the telecom uh, business unit and Paul Baird, uh, who have invested many years so far in uh, FOSA to uh, allow me to uh, present today. So uh, today we will discuss uh, the Prismian Group uh, pre-CAM asset monitoring um, and asset integrity and sensing uh, technologies uh, for the uh, energy transmission and distribution uh, industry. This presentation uh, will be from a cable manufacturer uh, perspective and how we see monitoring in this uh, industry. So, uh, in the presentation, I will introduce uh, the Prismian Group, uh, Prismian Electronics, and our core uh, energy TND business, which is going to be the main focus of this uh, presentation. We'll discuss the use of advanced fiber based monitoring for medium voltage and high voltage, extra high voltage cable system. Um, we will discuss fiber optics, which is at the heart of our monitoring strategy and uh, we will share how uh, fiber optic cables have already been making an impact and difference in uh, transmission and distribution monitoring applications uh, in the US. Prismian Group is a journey that began uh, two centuries ago in 1879 as uh, Pirelli. In 2011, Prismian and Draca one of the uh, industry fiber optic cable leaders uh, joined forces to form the Prismian Group. In 2018, we merged one of the US cable leaders, General Cable, into Prismian Group to form a truly global group and the number one uh, worldwide cable leader in, the, uh, in this industry. With approximately 30,000 employees, across 50 countries and uh, 112 plants, 25 R&D centers. Uh, today, the Prismian Group is approximately a 11 billion euro uh, revenue uh, company. The Prismian Group is the partner of uh, the world's uh, key industry players. And this gives us a uh, great understanding of the needs of the various industries we serve in terms of uh, monitoring. So I'd like now to briefly introduce uh, Prismian Electronics, a company of the Prismian Group. Prismian Electronics' focus uh, is to bring innovation in the energy uh, industry since our birth in uh, 2012. We uh, do so by adding and integrating electronics and photonics onto uh, electrical assets with the uh, objective to, uh, to get deep information on asset conditions. Uh, the uh, target is to help energy TND customers increase uptime, asset longevity, safety, while reducing maintenance cost and, uh, and risk. The uh, energy TND uh, industry is uh, changing, and our objective uh, at Prisman Electronics is to uh, provide uh, data. 
accurate, reliable uh, data, data uh, available remotely, so utilities can uh, safely drive uh, power. And this is what we call uh, uh, PreCam. Our uh, hardware software solutions uh, include more than 25 patents uh, with an original focus on uh, partial discharge uh, measurements. This will not be the main theme of this uh, presentation, uh, but I thought it, uh, it is important to uh, point out that one of the main reasons medium voltage, high voltage uh, electrical assets fail is related to partial discharge. We, uh, as a company, take approximately 500 to 1,000 PD measurements uh, per day and now have an incredible uh, library of more than 5 million uh, data points. Those 5 million uh, measurements are fed into an algorithm uh, which help us improve um, prediction on electrical uh, assets when monitoring those uh, systems. Prismian Electronics is taking on a key role in the uh, energy TNG industry. We are a cable monitoring system integrator and data provider, and we were awarded the very first combined and integrated monitoring system for power cable systems in uh, 2015. This included partial discharge, uh, distributed temperature sensing, and other sensors, all integrated in, uh, in one platform. Prismian Electronics has a unique global track record with more than 150 uh, recurring customers and uh, 800 permanent monitoring systems. And I would like to point out that uh, combined asset monitoring system is becoming a new standard in the uh, underground and submarine medium voltage, high voltage um, power cable system condition assessment. Our core business is the uh, energy TND for monitoring purposes, whether uh, it is power grids, uh, construction and infrastructure, oil and gas, renewable industries. And we see a strong need and demand for industrial applications where maintaining reliable power for uh, critical facilities is, uh, is key. Some good examples are uh, data centers, hospitals, uh, nuclear plants, petrochemical plants, uh, offshore, onshore wind farms, and, uh, and solar plants. So, uh, why are we using advanced fiber-based monitoring for medium voltage and high voltage, X-Y voltage power cable system? First, uh, there is a trend and the industry wants to move from a reactive, preventive maintenance, meaning run to failure or plant-based uh, outages, to uh, condition-based maintenance, predictive uh, maintenance, based on condition assessment and uh, prediction of uh, critical conditions. This is uh, important because when those medium voltage, high voltage assets fail, uh, it costs a lot of money. In the US, economy uh, losses due to uh, power outages are estimated to be $150 billion uh, a year with uh, the outage cost uh, varying depending on the, uh, on the industry. Moreover, there are some technical studies that show why advanced fiber monitoring is so uh, important. In April 2009, the uh, International Committee CIGRE uh, published a technical brochure which provided an update of service experience of high voltage underground and submarine cable systems. I wanted to share here and try to summarize uh, the study in line with this uh, webinar and let you know that AC LAN cables showed that 50% of faults uh, were uh, external. Out of those faults, 30% 
were related to third party mechanical uh, damages. In the case of AC DC submarine cables, over 50% of faults occurred on unprotected uh, cables. 85% of a defined number of faults were due to external influences. And in this particular case, 50% of damages were known to be caused by uh, anchors. This is, in my opinion, a, a good way to demonstrate how critical uh, fiber sensing technologies such as distributed acoustic sensing uh, can be uh, used and uh, how useful uh, they can be. So how can we best uh, monitor those uh, underground and submarine uh, cable systems? Well, there are a lot of uh, different things and different type of monitoring systems one could uh, use. Partial discharge is a great tool to perform testing after installation and ensure those uh, cable systems are uh, healthy and uh, will allow also to predict failure and locate uh, failures. Distributed temperature sensing can be used after installation in order to get a baseline, temperature baseline of the cable environment, will allow us to detect hotspots and again uh, locate failures if, uh, if any. Real-time thermal rating or RTTR as well as depth of burial uh, calculation engine uh, can allow us to predict failures and optimize cable uh, system operation. And finally, uh, distributed acoustic sensing can be used after installation test, allow us to predict failure and locate uh, failures. So having combined monitoring and fully, uh, fully integrated monitoring system uh, allow us and uh, utilities to keep uh, energy transmission and distribution assets under control. We uh, do that using uh, advanced automatic analysis based on uh, machine learning. And here's an illustration of how data uh, can be displayed to make uh, DTS, DAS, and other monitoring system uh, data interpretation and visualization as easy as possible for uh, utility operators to take uh, decisions on the power grids. Okay, so now, uh, as I mentioned it uh, uh, previously, fiber optic is at the heart of our uh, monitoring uh, strategy. And I'd like to tell you a bit more about that. Um, we can install today uh, distributed temperature sensing up to 200 kilometers and thus up to 140 kilometers uh, from a uh, substation point. This is going to become uh, more and more relevant uh, in our industry as underground or submarine cable technologies improve and the need for very long DC interconnection or export offshore cable uh, increase. Before digging uh, into details around the fiber optic cable monitoring technologies, I would like to uh, maybe clarify our approach regarding uh, fiber optic based uh, monitoring of those uh, transmission and distribution cable systems. For any project involving uh, monitoring, any cable project involving monitoring, we uh, consistently uh, drive to strike balance between technologies, performance, budget, and uh, operation. As a monitoring integrator, uh, we are, let's say, um, uh, technology agnostic, and we will always select the most adapted and suitable uh, fiber optic cable monitoring uh, solution for a uh, project. We uh, actually, uh, and this is uh, one strength of the Prismian group, uh, run tests 
on a regular basis in our high voltage uh, laboratory on real electrical assets, underground cable assets, submarine cable assets to help with this decision process and understand which type of technology is best suitable for this monitoring application. So that being said, uh, we use uh, DTS and DAS for different purposes. DTS helps us with hotspot locations, uh, underground cable operation optimization. We can use uh, even uh, our TTR data to uh, understand better uh, soil uh, thermal resistivity and improve, let's say, the uh, design of those um, underground uh, transmission and distribution system. It's also used uh, to uh, perform depth of uh, burial uh, calculation for uh, cable safety and again, uh, operation optimization. As for DAS, uh, we use it for cable fault location, third party um, intrusion or TPI, and in some cases, substation uh, security. There are uh, various technology and performance. Uh, there are many uh, FOSA members who have discussed in detail those technologies. So I only want to summarize here what we use for those different applications. Raman-based OFDR or OTDR, uh, multi-mode and single-mode DTS system, uh, Brion uh, BOTDA and BOTDR uh, single-mode uh, DTS up to 100 kilometer. For DAS, uh, Rayleigh coherent OTDR uh, system using single mode up to 70 kilometers. And in any uh, of those uh, cases, uh, the systems used are suitable for uh, harsh uh, ambient uh, conditions. Going back to the underground schematic, I would like to uh, illustrate uh, various fiber optic uh, configuration and uh, layout in our uh, industry. On the bottom right, you can see a, a duct bank uh, cross section within blue um, cases uh, using uh, external fiber optic cables. When using fiber optic cable externally, uh, we have the option to either utilize existing telecommunication uh, fiber optic ducts or uh, dedicate a separate duct for a DTS DAS uh, sensing um, technology uh, conduit. When using embedded fibers, we will place, as you can see uh, on the bottom of this slide, fibers in the screen or sheath of the high voltage uh, cable, or uh, as you can see on the bottom left, uh, we'll use external fiber optic cables as part of the uh, power cable uh, bundle. The approach is uh, very similar in a submarine cable applications where we can accommodate various fiber optic uh, configuration for AC, HV export cables and medium voltage interarray cables, as well as DC high voltage land and submarine interconnection uh, cables. So fiber optic cable monitoring is not all about uh, power cables. And as a power cable manufacturer and a partner of uh, key uh, electrical system uh, players, we look and approach these uh, electrical systems as a whole, as a grid uh, in its uh, entirety. And thanks to fiber optic, we can enable the monitoring of key electrical parameters of the various components of a grid solution, be it cables, joints, terminations, switch gear, transformers, electrical machines, to uh, detect, prevent, uh, localize events in a uh, power grid uh, system. Parameters that we look for uh, using uh, 
uh, fiber optics uh, in some ways or partial discharge uh, ozone concentration in switchgear cabinets for instance uh, pd temperature voltage current for link boxes in uh, high voltage underground uh, transmission uh, systems oil pressure uh, for um, transition joints and uh, terminations so a lot of things can be done using fiber optics well uh, i'm probably making this whole thing sound uh, very simple and easy if so uh, i'm probably doing a pretty good job so far at this uh, webinar um, <clears throat> otherwise it's time to tell you uh, the truth uh, deploying fiber optic cable monitoring has its own uh, challenges in our industry and one of the main questions and challenges uh, are or is uh, the position of the sensing fiber optic which we are illustrating here on, uh, on this slide and the main question is should the fiber be embedded or installed outside of the power cable I don't think that there is a right or, or wrong uh, answer uh, to that question, but what we decided to do here is share with FOSA and uh, the audience uh, pros and cons with either um, position. When talking about power cable installation, external fiber optic cable reduce uh, the cost associated with fiber optic cable supply and um, installation. We can utilize telecommunication fiber optic cables and can replace more easily fibers in case of any uh, issue. Embedded fibers have an incremental power cable manufacturing cost and also increase the cost of uh, operation and installation due to adding work with fiber optic splicing, terminating, pulling, uh, labor, qualified personnel needed to uh, perform um, installation of those fibers. And replacement of those fibers become more uh, difficult uh, when an issue occurs. As for DTS, external fiber optic cables uh, is great uh, and give us an overall uh, cable system temperature monitoring overview with greater focus on hotspots and other utility uh, crossings. There is a delay in, in cable temperature monitoring uh, requiring the use of uh, RTTR and RTTR can be uh, retrofitted uh, in most cases, depending on fiber optic cable position. Using embedded fibers, uh, DTS uh, allows us to uh, provide and get uh, cable temperature monitoring per uh, phase with almost no time delay. Retrofitting RTTR is possible at all times. And we can uh, increase the value uh, of RTTR by uh, improving rating over time, learning uh, ambient and environmental uh, conditions for our uh, power cables. Thus, increases TPI uh, capabilities when using external fiber optic cables and can be used to uh, locate cable fault. There is a, a delay in TPI capabilities when using embedded fibers, but increased value with cable fault uh, location. Partial discharge monitoring is uh, always possible, uh, whether the fiber is outside, inside, or uh, without fibers. So uh, what kind of... Um, sensing fiber optic cables uh, should we uh, should we use uh, the simple answer is that almost any fiber will do and this is the beauty of fiber-based sensing and uh, monitoring 
That being said, there are fiber optic cables that have been developed with sensing and uh, monitoring in mind. When using embedded fibers, we uh, recommend uh, the use of uh, dielectric or non-dielectric uh, uh, fiber optic cables. On the left, you can see a metal tube um, based fiber optic cables with different, uh, let's say, configuration, round tubes and flat tubes. On the right, um, dielectric solutions with um, possibility to uh, insert uh, more fibers, uh, up to 96 uh, fibers. For external applications, uh, fiber optic sensing should be uh, designed when possible with the uh, environmental condition of the fiber optic cable in mind. Uh, but here are some of the cables uh, most commonly used in our power cable uh, monitoring applications. Again, uh, different configurations, uh, different, um, let's say, uh, properties, uh, and different uh, fiber count uh, options up to 144 uh, fibers. I'm sharing here an example of a sensor cable deployment on site with a uh, dedicated conduit for the sensor cable on the left uh, picture and the fiber optic splice boxes on the right picture, sitting on top of the uh, high voltage uh, joint bay. Here, I wanted to highlight once again that fiber is a key enabler for further power cable system uh, monitoring. In the case of partial discharge monitoring, which is of uh, extreme value in power cable system application. PD sensors and acquisition units require a source of power as well as some mode of communication. And telecom fiber is the perfect connectivity mean in uh, power cable applications for uh, PD uh, monitoring. Having in mind the, the future of uh, power cable systems, we designed and already deployed a hybrid fiber optic uh, cable to uh, power discrete monitoring systems to perform distributed temperature sensing, distributed acoustic monitoring, and to ensure telecommunication along a power cable link. This cable can accommodate up to 76 fibers and uh, include three power uh, conductors. So uh, fiber optic cable is key uh, and is already making a difference in transmission and distribution monitoring applications in the USA, in North America, and we would like to share with you some uh, concrete case studies. This one slide is an illustration of a fully combined and integrated monitoring solution installed in the US on a uh, extra high voltage underground AC power cable system at 230 kV. The solution consists of an end-to-end -end DTS and RTTR uh, system for power cable conductor temperature and emergency rating calculation, a distributed acoustic sensing for third-party intrusion monitoring, namely digging detection, manhole cover opening detection. We are also using DAS in this case to locate cable faults. And in addition to that, using partial discharge monitoring as well as sheath current monitoring along this uh, 230 kV underground cable system. The second case is a monitoring installation on a extra high voltage or high voltage underground and submarine uh, power cable system at 230 kV 
with again a combined and integrated monitoring system across approximately 61 miles of uh, cables. The solution implemented and uh, installed is an end-to-end -end DTS RTTR solution for power cable conductor temperature and emergency rating purposes, as well as depth of burial monitoring of the 50 mile submarine uh, section. We are using DAS again for third party intrusion monitoring to look at digging and manhole cover opening of the land sections and monitor anchoring events of the submarine uh, cable section. We are also using DAS for cable fault location across the entire uh, circuit. Partial discharge monitoring is used as well, more or less across the entire length of the circuit with a focus on all land and sea land transition high voltage accessories. To conclude, uh, we would like to share with you all our view on drivers for further fiber optic enabled uh, monitoring of US power cable assets. We believe that a few things will contribute and drive the uh, expansion of fiber optic enabled monitoring of US power cable assets. There is a growing trend of uh, IoT and uh, need uh, from utilities to drive power assets with uh, data. Utilities want to uh, reduce operation and maintenance uh, cost, capturing recurring threats such as partial discharge, cable fault, and uh, third party intrusion. Renewable energy is on the rise with major developments of offshore, onshore wind farms, floating offshore wind turbines, solar plants, driving the kilowatt hour cost uh, down. End to end circuit and power cable system monitoring is becoming more and more uh, important. And there is a focus to uh, move uh, the experience in high voltage to medium voltage distribution assets. There is also uh, finally a uh, higher or increased uh, adopted adoption rate and standardization of fiber optic cable based asset monitoring solution for high voltage, extra high voltage, underground and submarine transmission. So lots of drivers that will again increase uh, the need and application of fiber optic uh, based monitoring solution of power cable assets in the US. That's it for me. Uh, thank you very much for your attention this morning or this afternoon. And I guess now is uh, time for questions. Uh, thank you very much, Landry. For those who want to ask a question, there's a text box on the right and you can you can just uh, t tape that in and uh, we'll be able to uh, share that. Um, can you um, uh, advise uh, 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 on the sampling frequency domain, the optical loss levels for DAS at 70 uh, kilometers? So we're really talking about getting a better handle on, on the, the range for the technology. Okay. Um, as I, uh, I said uh, at some point in, uh, in the presentation, uh, the objective was not to, let's say, uh, dig too deep in, in the sensing technologies. Uh, however, when uh, it comes to uh, DAS, uh, we have tested uh, DAS uh, for uh, uh, cable, uh, underground cable and submarine cable applications uh, up to, uh, to 70 kilometers and believe that uh, within uh, 70 kilometers, we can uh, accurately detect uh, faults and uh, prevent uh, third-party uh, intrusion. 
Thank you. Could you talk, uh, expand a little bit on sort of the business case issues? Obviously, I assume the, the preference is to be able to uh, uh, do installation at the time that uh, the overall cabling is being installed, but could you expand a little bit on the economics associated with doing retrofitting? Yes, this is a, a very good um, a question, and uh, I hope I was able to uh, make this message clear in the in the slide. Um, retrofitting is uh, possible, and in fact, uh, the second case study that I showed um, here on this slide uh, is a retrofit uh, application. So um, we can uh, retrofit monitoring uh, in, in different ways. Uh, the easiest is uh, using uh, or utilizing existing telecommunication uh, uh, fiber optic cables. So when they are uh, telecom fibers available, uh, wherever they are uh, along this uh, cable system, I would say that uh, retrofitting a monitoring solution is uh, not so uh, uh, complicated and not so uh, costly compared to a new uh, installation. There are cases uh, where we have retrofitted after the fact fiber optic cable uh, in uh, existing uh, duct banks or conduits uh, with medium voltage or high voltage uh, assets uh, and I would say uh, the uh, economics uh, is really uh, dependent on uh, uh, let's say the, the willingness and need of the end user and utility to do uh, monitoring uh, compared to uh, potential faults, uh, cost of outages and so on. So uh, from my point of view um, and this is again a trend we are seeing uh, whether we saw new cable system or uh, existing cable system, uh, retrofitting is possible, uh, not so costly when using existing telecom fibers, a bit more costly um, from a capex point of view uh, when retrofitting uh, fibers, but again, uh, cheaper long term uh, if we consider uh, cost of outages, um, and failures of those uh, expensive assets uh, feeding uh, key uh, and critical um, infrastructures. Uh, and I would say uh, maybe to conclude that today uh, uh, in the current uh, COVID-19 uh, situation, uh, safeguarding uh, electrical assets is key uh, and uh, investing in monitoring um, becomes uh, even more uh, relevant. Thank you. So, so the next question uh, focuses on uh, the use of uh, conduits and uh, are there just sort of for each of the various applications, DTS, DAS, uh, aerial and underground, um, would you recommend or to what extent would you recommend the use of uh, conduits or how, how or, or maybe comment on the feasibility of using conduits as well? Oh. I'm not sure what um, we mean by conduits, uh, existing conduits um, well, with to, cables to, inside. Or? I, I, I was, well, I'm not assuming, but on on uh, on buried, I, uh, I was, in many cases the 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 fiber would be located within a conduit. Uh, is it possible then to use those uh, those that fiber that's in the conduit for the applications that you described? Yes. Um, the answer is uh, yes, and I understand the question now. Um, so uh, again, uh, we can uh, use uh, existing fibers in separate conduits. Uh, in fact, uh, we do that, uh, I would say, in 50% of the cases. Um, and uh, the uh, only uh, challenge, and I would say uh, being a cable manufacturer, we, uh, we may uh, be a uh, uh, may have an advantage is to be able to have all uh, details, uh, technical details and, and specification regarding the, the cable environment. 
So uh, we want to know uh, exactly what the position of this conduit is uh, in comparison to the power cable system. Uh, we want to know um, what uh, the uh, soil uh, resistivity, uh, thermal resistivity is, uh, whether it's uh, concrete, uh, sand, uh, whatever application uh, uh, we are uh, looking at. Uh, so th there is, um, let's say, a lot of uh, inputs uh, required, which are usually part of the details a cable manufacturer gets when designing a uh, underground uh, cable system. Uh, but yes, uh, we definitely uh, use external fibers uh, in uh, external uh, or separate conduits. And again, uh, the work we have to do uh, is to ensure we have all the right inputs uh, to um, basically be as uh, accurate uh, when uh, performing monitoring and, uh, and rating. I would also say that uh, today uh, there are uh, uh, RTTR uh, calculation engine uh, that can uh, over time learn from the environment. So when uh, we don't have all those details, we have ways over time to uh, obtain this uh, information by uh, understanding what the soil temperature is and therefore what the uh, soil uh, thermal resistivity is and, and so on. But uh, the answer is a definite uh, yes. And I think you've addressed this already, but perhaps you can expand on it. This is a follow-up to that. Uh, would you expect a delay in DTS temperatures even for embedded fiber because of the insulation again that would be a conduit layer between the core and the fiber so um, you may just I think you've covered it but you may want to just expand on that a little bit indeed um, yes uh, I covered that uh, but I would say uh, when the fiber is uh, embedded uh, and that was uh, the point of one of the tables uh, in one of the slides when the fiber is embedded <clears throat> there is uh, more or less no delay or significant uh, uh, delay uh, between uh, fiber temperature and, and conductor uh, temperature. Uh, when the fiber is outside, uh, again, it depends where it is, uh, how far, uh, what type of uh, medium we have between fibers and uh, cable. And so this delay is, um, is uh, non-negligible, I would say. Uh, and therefore making the use of RTTR, uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, critical. Uh, whereas uh, when the fiber is embedded and the purpose is to uh, only understand cable temperature and not perform a transient calculation, I think that using DTS uh, to some extent uh, is, uh, is acceptable. So a little bit out of field from uh, the transmission, electric transmission, but regarding oil and gas asset monitoring, do you use fiber for tank and conduit temperature sensing? My, um, let's say, focus uh, today is really um, uh, energy uh, TND applications. Uh, so uh, I cannot comment uh, too much uh, from my point of view on on this, uh, although I know that uh, uh, DTS manufacturers uh, that we work with uh, do that all the time, so it is possible. Um, but uh, Prism Electronics, as a team so far, has spent uh, uh, most of its time focusing on electrical assets, uh, cables, switch gears, transformers, uh, electrical machines, and so on. Perhaps we have an idea for another uh, future uh, webinar to address those uh, use cases. Um, what is the accuracy level of detection for DPI and substation security with DAS? Uh, it depends again on um, the uh, cable system environment, on the DAS technology uh, we use. So there is no, uh, let's say, uh, uh, straight or concrete answer. However, uh, when using DAS uh, for uh, underground and submarine cables, uh, we look at um, mainly uh, K 
cable, uh, cable faults, again, uh, anchoring, uh, digging, and um, manhole cover uh, opening. Uh, when it comes to cable faults, uh, I would say um, uh, the, the precision is, uh, is uh, excellent, so uh, that will allow uh, us to uh, precisely uh, detect and locate a uh, fault. Uh, as for TPI, um, I would say that uh, there is a, a learning curve. Um, reason being that DAS uh, was not used until um, recently in uh, cable applications. Uh, in fact, I believe that uh, the Prismian group is one of um, the cable manufacturers that uh, is pushing the use of DAS in, uh, in this application. So we still need to, uh, I guess, uh, get uh, more data uh, to have a better uh, uh, filters uh, related to those different events uh, we can see. Uh, but I could say that uh, after a few months um, of using DAS in one specific uh, environment, we are capable of uh, implementing uh, alarm thresholds to detect those uh, events within, uh, let's say, uh, a few hundred meters from, from the fiber. And again, it depends on the type of uh, cable, the position of the fiber, and uh, the DAS uh, system we will uh, use for the specific uh, application. So next is, uh, do you see cases where specialty optical fiber needs to be used in uh, the application? And, and the example used is where uh, there are higher temperatures. And there's something of a related question about uh, uh, whether or not to use uh, uh, specialty fiber, uh, specialty materials uh, in or in some use cases. So I don't know, maybe you can combine, combine responding to those two questions. Okay. Um, yes, I, I think uh, I showed um, a few slides on a different type of, um, uh, let's say, special cable we've developed um, for external uh, fiber optic cable monitoring uh, applications. Uh, so, uh, again, we can use um, any fibers, uh, but uh, we have to be uh, smart. Uh, and understand uh, the environment where we uh, install this fiber optic uh, cable. So if we need uh, rodent protection or uh, uh, water ingress protection and, and things like that, uh, we, uh, we have to design cables uh, specifically for that. Um, I um, uh, illustrated that in one of the slides, but we uh, actually designed, and I don't know if we call that a specialty cable, but uh, we designed a hybrid fiber optic cable um, for uh, underground application. So uh, we could be uh, in a position to perform any kind of monitoring using external fibers uh, in an in a underground cable application. So the, the answer is, uh, I don't know, maybe not uh, straightforward, but uh, yes, I think having special uh, specialty fiber optic cables uh, with, uh, uh, let's say, improved um, uh, water penetration resistance or mechanical uh, bending uh, resistance is uh, great and will make uh, monitoring last uh, uh, longer. Uh, in terms of temperature, um, this was not uh, mentioned here, but those uh, high voltage cables are more or less designed uh, to operate up to 90 degrees uh, Celsius in normal operation and 105 degrees Celsius in emergency uh, operation. So the temperatures seen by the fibers are not uh, so high compared to, let's say, uh, oil and gas uh, downhole uh, applications. Uh, so I think the uh, specialization of the fiber optic cable may not necessarily be uh, on the fiber, but uh, more on the uh, fiber optic cable construction, uh, so it fits uh, for the application. 
So the next question really goes to some of the economics that we've uh, uh, alluded to. And the question is, is can the other cores be used for actual telecoms uh, data transmission? A, a nice softball uh, question for you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I should have known that um, uh, ending early will uh, cause uh, more questions. So right. uh, yes, uh, the answer is, um, is yes. Uh, we can use um, uh, telecom fiber optic uh, bundles uh, for telecom purposes and sensing purposes. Again, uh, when using DTS or DAS, really what we need is one fiber. Unless you loop uh, and then you will need two fibers. So the, the quantity of fibers is uh, not so important. So the impact on telecommunication is, uh, is minimum. But thank you very much on that. And and I think that the, the rest that there are more some more technical questions. Um and I uh I think it probably would be best to reference people to your email uh which is there uh on the last slide and, and perhaps they can address those questions directly. Um uh, I will also say we did oh, as we frequently do get a number of questions about when the presentation will be available both the slides but actually the video of the presentation should be available uh, probably later today uh, on uh, FOSA's website uh, actually linking into our YouTube page so uh, I know a lot of people will be able to participate uh, that way uh, and I'll also do a plug for our uh, next FOSA webinar that's coming up on May 28th uh, and we're going to focus on a different uh, use case, distributed optical fiber sensing for geotechnical and structural health applications. Uh, so another approach to the way the technology is being used. Um, you can you can register on our webs on our web page uh, for that. Again, that will be on uh, uh, May 28th uh, at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, thank you very much, Landry, for a very informative uh, presentation. Thank you. And that concludes this webinar.